What's up, traders? Welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Watchlist, where I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on the tickers listed up above. We'll, of course, be checking in on our broad market. We've got our core list of companies that we're always watching. And this week, I've got five additional trade ideas to share with you towards the end of the video. So definitely stay tuned for that. As always, anything we are associated with is linked down below in the description. And without further ado, let's jump right into these charts. Kicking things off on the SPY weekly timeframe, looking at candle structure and location as we always do for structure, we certainly have a bullish hammer candle, right? The large lower wick would indicate that the buyers really stepped up off of these lows, pushed it to the opening print, through the opening print, and closed relatively strong up at the highs of this week's session. Notice that there is absolutely zero upper wick on the weekly bar. So that to me has to be more bullish than bearish. However, if we start thinking about location, it's a little bit more nuanced than that, right? From a bar by bar perspective, we do have a lower high. We also have a lower low. There's no way around it. That has to be more bearish than bullish this time around, right? But if we start to tie in pattern and other other types of locations, right? If I scrunch it up just a little bit, remember that we've been monitoring this head and shoulders pattern right here. Where's your neckline? Of course, that's weekly support right around that area here. We have nothing more than a lower wick that pierced it. And then we closed again at the highs of this weekly bar after a failed breakdown from the sellers. So because there's a lack of follow through or just a lack of bearish price acceptance, zero of the candle body is underneath the neckline, correct? There was no candle body that was spent down here. That strikes me as being more bullish than bearish, but only in the short term, right? So two of the three things that we just discussed do fall into the bull camp. So yes, in the short term, we will look for some follow through to the upside here from the weekly time frame perspective. However, as I've mentioned, it's only in the short term. Please do not forget that we have highs, we have lower highs, we have lows, we now have a new lower low. Because of that, we can afford a new lower high. So even if there is short-term follow-through, if we produce a lower high that does not get up to this double top in here, we'll talk about that on the daily in just a moment, it keeps us in a weekly downtrend. So yes, there was significant buying reactions that we saw on Thursday and Friday, but please don't forget that we need, uh, we need excuse me, higher lows and higher highs for a new uptrend to emerge here on the weekly time frame chart. So let's drill down to that daily now and start talking about some of those critical areas and how this could potentially unfold. All right, so here's what we have. Obviously, Thursday is where the big gap down happened. We repaired that gap, so it filled almost immediately. And then we saw some follow through on the Friday session. So there's a couple of things that I wanna point out here. On the Friday follow through session, we did break this secondary resistance trend line coming from Anchor, touch one, and you can clearly see we've closed above on Friday session. So that has to strike me as being slightly more bullish than bearish as well. I'm going to remove that. The other thing we can read into is if this is going to be considered a trading range, then this is of course a look below and fail. That's a bullish pattern and we will look for follow through for the high of the range, right? You look for the rotation all the way on up to the top. Now, I do think that there are some areas that could provide some drag, some resistance here. So I'm not gonna say that it has to get here this upcoming week, but that's what the pattern might suggest. The lack of sellers down here is really what's causing this to move higher. I'm not necessarily convinced that it's all out buying pressure. I really feel as though it's a lack of sellers willing to pile in short at these lows here, or people who got caught up in the overnight session with poor trade location, who covered their shorts, fueled a little bit of a quote unquote, I say this word very lightly, short squeeze, right? And now we're trading in the midpoint of the overall range, right? So this ties into what we're going to do early on in the week. I think patience has to be the play here. Does it seem like a good place to start chasing this thing long? I'm not entirely convinced, right? We've already seen two extremely bullish days back to back. Markets can always feel overbought or oversold or whatever we would like to classify them based on our own emotions. But in order to play this in a more risk-friendly manner, I would love to see some bull flag consolidation and then a break to the upside after we can confirm that yes, this is not just a knee-jerk reaction to the upside. It's not like the sellers are gonna pile back in and we'll get that lower high and then equal low that we were talking about from the weekly timeframe chart. 
So what levels do we need to see hold or break for us to start changing our thoughts and take actionable setups here on our SPY daily? Well, to the upside, you can start to see this prior level, right? The top end of this range right here. It was the bottom end of this range right here. It's very close to the daily 200 SMA, depending on time of week and when and if we get there. It's also very close to the primary resistance trend line coming from anchor, touch one and touch two right here. So to me, 444 up to roughly, I don't know, maybe 445 slightly above, depending on time of week, could be the critical area that needs to break if the trend is going to change back to the upside. If that happens, then yes, I would imagine we're gunning for the top end of the range, which we pointed out, look below and fail would constitute the move to the top end. That's 457.50. That's what could potentially happen if we get a bull flag consolidation period and then break that into the future. Again, it could do something like this as well. No one really knows what's going to happen, but in terms of actually playing this, I would love to see the consolidation first. We put in some sort of low. We can use that as a stop loss. Loss, then look for follow through to the upside or just have more of a bullish slant in the marketplace, correct? The low that needs to hold, of course, is going to be this right here, 429, 430, roughly coming from the bottom end of this range right here. It's also very roughly the gap fill from Friday and Thursday, right? There was a very nuanced slight gap up on the Friday session. We filled that, we pull back, we get no acceptance back into the Thursday range, another bullish indication, right? The fact that we're not overlapping here, and then we move higher. So if 429 can hold on pullbacks, this would seem at least like healthy bull flag consolidation, and then we can get that breakout. If it does not hold, if 429 breaks, that's where, again, this could easily become another lower high, all of these lower highs, correct? And we would just look for follow through back to the downside. Now, here's an interesting thing I want to point out, right? 417.50 looks like a random level on our chart, but I'll tell you it is not. It is coming from our market profile. So if I come on over to the market profile, here we go. This is the Thursday session. We open down here, obviously, and we make that run higher. Where's your point of control, though? That is the 41750 in the ES futures. It's 4175-ish uh, area. And you'll notice that that's apparently the fairest price to do business on Thursday. So it's not like the point of control migrated higher with price and the futures are currently open and moving lower as we can see. We'll discuss that in just a second here. But look at all of this on the upside of Thursday. Again, if that 429 in the SPY does not hold, there's virtually no structure in this area. Notice the profile is very, very thin until we come back down to that 41750 in the SPYs and the point of control that we can see here on the futures. Again, if you're not familiar with the terminology that I'm using right now, check out the video in the top right hand corner. It's going to describe some of the terms, what we're looking at in the first place. Maybe it'll start to make more sense. This, of course, is market profile. And what I wanted to point out again is how 41750 is not a random level. It's the point of control from the rally impulsive day on Thursday. If while we're at it, we may as well look at the Friday action as well. You can clearly see that we did get price acceptance higher here, but with the current open that's below the low, I'm not overly convinced, right? So let's move back on over to the platform for now and talk about this as if, you know, the markets weren't open right now. We talked about consolidation here, need to hold 429, need to get some sort of consolidation and then a break to be more bullish to the top end of the range. That's the upside. We talked about downside 41750 is the line in the sand. If that breaks, 405 down to 400 is the next targets here in our S&P 500. So I know it was a lot today. I know we discussed a lot of possibilities, but I don't want anyone to get wrapped up in the knee jerk reaction that just because we have this pattern here, extreme bullish reactions, that it must be higher back up to the all time highs, right? There's a lot of work that needs to be done before that is on the table. So those are my thoughts in our S&P 500. Let's continue along here and talk about the QQQ for the NASDAQ 100, of course. Same sort of theories will apply here, but it's slightly different. Uh, notice that we're above all of this critical resistance. So instead of the resistance trend line, which would be a tertiary at this point, I'm not going to read into that too, too much. We're above all of these levels, right? So that one is the most important one. That was the equal low right here. That's where we got follow through. It's also, if I zoom in a little bit more, it's where we resisted on the Tuesday morning session, right? Or excuse me, was that Wednesday, Tuesday? I'm getting my days confused. That's Tuesday. So there's the Tuesday morning session. We closed back above that, right? It's also the low from here. So that to me is the equivalent of closing above the resistance trend line in our S&P 500. The thorn in the side of your QQQ will of course just be this level right around here, which is the top end of this balance. 
and the low end of this balance right here. If we can break that, if we can break the resistance trend line, maybe we get the rotation to the highs for that more equal high pattern. And again, if we think about look below and fail, that would constitute a move to there. Top end of the range, 369 is that target, All right, So 353, if it breaks, 369 top of the range could certainly be in play. If we get rollover here and we start to come down for an equal low, then obviously you would wanna see this hold up first around that 334.27. That would give us the possibility of short-term bull flag consolidation, probably more apparent on an hourly or 30 minute chart. And then we can go from there. But if it breaks that 334 quarter, then we're looking for that same sort of level in the NQ futures, that point of control. Let's move back on over to the market profile. Let's find that together. Notice it's the exact low of the Wednesday session. So that is certainly going to be a weak level because it's a nuanced area that probably only short-term traders can see. The point of control and also the low of the Wednesday session, I would imagine that any attempts to that level will break and easily take us to this level, the low of the Thursday session basically the open, correct? So, oops, we want to go back on over to the platform all over the place with the hotkeys. Apologies for that. But back to point out that level, here it is. There is the Wednesday and Thursday level that we were talking about, 329 roughly. Okay. So any pullbacks in your QQQ need to hold this area. If we chop around in here, I would expect exactly that. Notice how there's a lot of overlap in value here. I wouldn't be overly biased in this area. If we can break, we know what we're looking for for long targets. If we take that out, it's obviously the equal low and the weekly downtrend does continue here in our QQQ. As of right now, just like in the S&P 500s, we will give the bulls the upper hand based on what unfolded on Thursday and Friday, but they still have some work that needs to be done before the daily and weekly trends flip back to the upside. I want to be abundantly clear about that as we head into this upcoming week. Next and lastly, for our broad market, let's take a look at the IWM for the Russell 2000. This one is exhibiting potentially the cleanest double bottom, right? Everything else really set a more significant lower low. This one's more on par with what what we saw in here. So if this is going to be a double bottom, we know that the break of the neckline is the entry point of the pattern that's way up there at 208. I would also point out that if you remember back to the weekly range that we were stuck in for nearly a year, it's the bottom end. We've already resisted off of it once. That's how it sort of uh, has established itself as the neckline. So if it breaks, maybe that's a more bullish indication, but still there's a lot of work before that can even unfold. Let's go back down to the daily and discuss why. In terms of zooming in here, Notice that we had multiple attempts at it already. So on a smaller time frame, it's a double top. So again, this area is the important pivot in the IWM, 208. If we're below it, I would have to say that we need to be at least neutral to slightly bearish. If we're back above it, that's where we can start looking for new longs inside of small caps, and maybe there's potential that it drags the rest of the marketplace higher. We know that IWM is roughly seen as risk on, uh, risk off. So again, a recapture of 208 may be a signal that the market's ready for more of a risk on type move. So 208 critical pivot here in IWM. We can also start to think of, again, there's a number of ways to read into it. We were saying that this was the look above and fail target bottom end of the range. Now you could say that Thursday was the look below and fail, but we've already come back up and tested the top end of the range. So that pattern is no longer really valid here in the IWM. I would be careful in here looking for longs over 208. And if we resist once again at the 208, so inverted hammers, also resistance trend line, right? Maybe it's short back down under lows for at least a move to here. If there's any pullbacks in IWM, that 197.15, 197 needs to be the higher low. So we can do something like this and maybe start to build out the beginnings of a new daily uptrend. So those are the nuances in small caps, let's move along into our companies. If you've made it to this point in the video, I'm sure you're enjoying the analysis. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so you know every single time a new video comes out. Kicking off our companies here with Apple, the same sort of theme will apply to a majority of our companies. Notice that we did make a new lower low. We also supported at the daily 200 SMA. Strong buy side reaction filled the gap overhead. Obviously, that's a good thing from a structural repair perspective. However, we're not going to be overly bullish inside of Apple unless we can either put in bull flag consolidation or recapture the breakdown point roughly 167, 168. We know 168 was better respected here. 167 was the equal lows, also resistance from the Tuesday open. If we can recapture that, 171 is the next structural element of resistance that we should be paying attention to. And again, even if we get there and we roll over, that could potentially be just another set of lower highs. So Apple is still certainly going to be more neutral than bullish in the short term. Again, bull flag consolidation, something that would appear obvious on like a 30 minute or hourly chart. 
yeah, we are looking for that follow through to the upside, but from the grand scheme of things on the daily, we know that we need uh, some more work to be done before the trend will shift back to being more bullish than bearish. To the downside, we obviously need to hold Friday's low, which is around 160.85. If that does not hold and we break down, 157 should support, or well, rather could support for a higher low from here to here, and then we'll be in more of a neutral trend with a higher low and a lower high. We'll have to reassess as that potentially unfolds. So just to recap here one more time, I'm going to get rid of this 164 quarter. It's not really doing a whole lot for us anymore. Anything that happens here, potential short-term bull flag consolidation recaptures, bring us to 171 from there, obviously of 177. Feels like a little bit of a stretch as of right now, but who knows? Maybe it's on the table. Breakdowns underneath the 165.85, potential for a higher low around 157. You can see support here and support here from in the past. If it does something like that, we get a sort of tightening pattern and then we'll reassess on a break of a support or resistance trend line. After that, if this does not hold for the higher low, obviously a reattempt to this equal low here at 152.20 would be a more bearish outcome. Let's continue along and talk about Netflix. I've got to zoom in and adjust this chart as we've had to do the past couple of weeks, of course, with the earnings sort of conundrum, which made the chart fairly ugly. Nonetheless, same sort of theory applies, right? Bullish activity on the Thursday, Friday session, a bit of price acceptance. Notice how this is not as cleanly stacked above. Uh, so this overlap strikes me as consolidation acceptance in the upper half of the Thursday range. So is this already a bull flag? Yeah, it's starting to feel that way. If we get breakouts, it's got to be a recapture of that 397-ish area for the rotation here, right? 412.72. If you're even more skeptical, and again, maybe you should be because we're off of a huge gap down from the earnings, that gap never really filled. We're in a bit of a short-term daily downtrend. So maybe it is right to be more skeptical. The cleaner long, as we know, is the break of the 412.72 to get us here, four data points, one, two, three, four there. And then after that, the bottom end of the gap. So that's the long side here inside of Netflix. If we can't get any acceptance of, uh, up above that 397, we'll call it, and we just kind of roll over here, then again, your must hold support is the Friday low, 376.80. If it breaks, equal lows here, especially in short proximity of time, do turn this into a flush point around 352.67. Then we would look for some more serious follow through to the downside, one step at a time. Again, we're leaning that the bulls are taking a little bit of a stand here from the Thursday, Friday session, but just keep in mind, again, patience in here, breakouts to the upside, to the downside really reevaluate, right? That would be a failed attempt from the buyers to reverse things here. Who knows? Maybe it gets fairly nasty to the downside. All sort of speculative in nature, but we need to be open to that in these market conditions, given that everything's sort of, you know, indecisive as of right now in terms of whether or not this will fully be the turnaround. So zooming in on Tesla up next, of course, same sort of theory applies. Obviously, the gap has been repaired from Thursday into Friday, or excuse me, Wednesday into Thursday. That's repaired on the Thursday session. Friday got acceptance higher. In this one, I would still be patient in this area. Chop day trades are fine between 800 and 845. If we can recapture this, we know that 900 is the next test. And then after that, 945 is the breakout point. 950, some people have rounded up, uh, it up to. And then 1000 is up after that. I've sort of cleaned up some of these charts. It doesn't strike me that that will be in play at least early on in the week. So I would be patient in, sort, uh, in, in many of these setups. To be quite honest with you, patience is kind of the play to determine whether or not this buy move is, is seriously going to hold up. If we can consolidate, get these higher prices accepted, then we're looking for those breaks of prior support which is now going to be resistance, correct? So be on the lookout for things that form like this. Patience in here, day trades are fine, do whatever you, uh, you know, you're know you inclined to do, but the cleaner trades will come from breaks and recaptures of the prior support, which could now potentially offer some resistance. So that's kind of the theme, as I've pointed out in Apple, that we're watching out for. Do we produce something that does this, higher low, and then we can break back into this range here? Or if we can't hold up, Friday's low, obviously we know the equal low here is more likely to happen. 700 is the number, uh, again, bullish slant based on the activity Thursday, Friday, but we'll see. I know it's not incredibly insightful, but we're kind of in no man's land here. I would wait for cleaner moves uh, either up above 854 or sloppier moves, aka flushes underneath uh, 762 inside of Tesla. Let's move along here. Talk about Alibaba. Uh, let me know in the comments, actually. We sort of did a poll on one of the live streams. Should this remain in our lineup here or should it be replaced? If you think it should be replaced, let me know that you think it should be replaced and also what to replace it with. We'll sort of 
gather a vote, a tally here, and see what the outcome of that is. Nonetheless, in Alibaba, more bearish because we are still underneath this flush point of the prior range right here. So we are looking for shorting opportunities against 110. Any sort of indecision uh, dojis that print, basically lack of follow through from the buyers here to get us back up into range. Inverted hammers would be even better, indicating that large upper wick would say, hey, the sellers are actually hanging out here. Short under the lows, looking for an equal move down here into that 100 psychological level. If we break back up into 110, it's all about the gap overhead. The first one is from 115.50 up to 117.15. We'll see, right? To me, I would definitely lean more bearish on this one because of the overall downtrend that we've been in. We know this thing has been beaten up, uh, you know, repeatedly for months and months and months. So that's primarily what I would watch out for here, the failed recapture of 110. Let's move along, talk about Facebook. Zooming into this one, obviously we'll have to adjust it just like we did on Netflix because of the earnings gap down. This one's interesting because it broke its daily resistance trend line, right? You can clearly see on Friday, it closed back above. We're also above that really tough area that we struggled with on the Tuesday and Wednesday session. So to me, it starts to become more attractive for at least an attempt at that 216.35. We know it was potentially going to turn into a double bottom here. It didn't materialize, but it could have been, correct? And we also failed on the back test there. So 216.35 is the number to watch for to the upside. If it gets taken out, maybe we move to this prior uh, pivot high, which is uh, 234.78. So that could definitely be in play if the market wants to see the follow through to the upside here over the course of the upcoming week. Because we have the break of this resistance trend line, the recapture of this horizontal area, Facebook would probably be skewed towards the top of my watch list on things to pay attention to if we need longs into this upcoming week because of everything we just discussed here. If we fail back down underneath 207, you're probably watching for this 200 psychological and then anything underneath that just sets up a massive sort of one of these H pattern equal low. We would look for follow through to the downside, bringing us closer to 174 as our target. Next up, we have Nvidia 240 has been recaptured back to the upside, but only by a little bit. Let's take a look at that here. So you can clearly see recapture of this area, prior resistance, support, 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 support. I mean, so much support in there. It was then resistant early on in the week. We did technically close above it, but in, in, in uh, excuse me, in NVIDIA, there we go. I would probably be patient, higher low pullback, reattempt of the resistance trend line for your breaks to get us back higher into the tops here, uh, which should be adjusted. They're, they're a little bit lower technically than that level that we have. So let's bring that down a little bit. That's more of an accurate representation around 266, we'll call it for round number six. So upside here is a little bit difficult to read just because we have chop here. Um, you know, so this, yeah, maybe it's attractive, but higher low pullbacks in the break of the resistance trend line would probably be what I would opt to watch for into that level right there, instead of just trying to blindly long it in this area where we know it's been a lot of back and forth, right? So Nvidia, in a little bit of a tricky spot here, but 240 nonetheless can be a pivot. If we're above, lean a little bit more bullish than bearish. If we're below, obviously you're looking for that rotation. To the bottom end here, we have supports around 218, and then 209 is your line in the sand. Also the daily support trend line. It's probably even, you could classify it as a weekly, noting that the origin is uh, way, way back here, almost a year ago now, then we get touch one. This was the first interaction that we saw on that large gap down from Thursday, right? So that's Nvidia in a nutshell, in a bit of a sticky situation, but use that 240 as a guide over bullish under a little bit more bearish. Microsoft up next, zooming in on this one. What do we have here? In no man's land, 300 is your critical level to pay attention to, to the upside. If we get that follow through, it's all about either breaking and then getting immediately up to this area here, horizontally 311, or rollover once again. We know we've already failed the back test of it once. You would look for the Friday low and then a break of that, as we know gets fairly nasty as it does in many of the things that we're watching, right? Friday's low will be sort of a pivotal area in many of these companies. So that number, by the way, is gonna be roughly 291, 25, 91, 50s. If that area doesn't hold, then, you know, look out below, probably coming back down towards that 275 over the course of time. Doesn't have to be an all out crash as soon as it breaks, but over the course of time, we would just look at this as nothing more than another lower high trend continuation to the downside, correct? So just to wrap it up, keep it simple here. Bull flag consolidation, uh, price acceptance higher can happen here. Longs above 300 for the break and potentially 311 or breakdowns of Friday low for the move eventually back down towards 275. Next up, we have Amazon. And last but not least for our core list of companies, at least, uh, this one did fill the gap. So I would remind you that this was the prior gap that has now filled. Interestingly enough, inside of Amazon, notice that we have this higher low 
correct? I don't think we've seen that in many of the things that we've watched so far. We have seen a lot of lower lows or equal lows, but Amazon has clearly given us a higher low. So that's slightly more bullish, or maybe you just look at it as neutral considering that we do still have lower highs, uh, but it's one more checkbox for the bulls instead of you know being all out bearish with the equal low. So that's uh, something noteworthy here. If we can recapture this level, the 3100 roughly, 3095, remember it was the three-day flush point, that gets me a little bit more excited for a break of the resistance trend line. But if we roll over early, something like that, not so impressed here inside of Amazon, a clear lower high that's even lower than our resistance trend line, correct? So that's primarily what I would watch for early on this week, 3,100 as a pivot. If we're above, again, it's uh, signaling to us at least higher price acceptance. I would still be careful. I think I've expressed this in prior videos as well. In Amazon, this is still a choppy range. Remember that this 3,176 is a weekly bottom end if we, let, let me just illustrate this, right? So if I zoom in, you can see that we were stuck in this range. We have yet to resolve that. So I would be very careful around the bottom end of that range if you're looking for you know longer term swing trades. For shorter term scalps, again, you guys just wanna know overall bullish or bearish feelings. That way you can trade in the direction of the trend. We've established that it's neutral. You can take intraday trades here, scalps back and forth. But again, the direction overall in this area because of what we just saw on the weekly, I would imagine it gets fairly sloppy in there and your pivots are really gonna be the top end of that range. So up and over 32.55 or underneath, again, the rollover on the back test of 3,100. So that's really what I would watch out for, something like that, choppiness in here, and longs looking better up above that 32.55. I know that might not be too useful in terms of short-term trading, but Amazon's in a sticky spot up around this area right here, I do imagine. So that's really all we've got in the core list of companies. Let's move along into these ideas. Quick reminder to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe button, the bell button, all the buttons YouTube tells us to tell you guys about. And let's get right into these trade ideas. First one's on VZ for Verizon Communications. They're actually my cell phone provider. Regardless, you can clearly see we have a pressure cooker top that's forming. It was also a big shelf of resistance here in the past. So 54.63, if it breaks, we're looking for a rotation for about a dollar move to the upside, 55.67. A bit of a slow mover. I will fully concede that here. Uh, might not be the most exciting thing to trade, but the setup is fairly valid noting the uh, technicality of this level right here. So that's the upside. If it does pull back, a higher low would be beautiful. That kind of respects this area here. Let's go ahead and map that in together. Uh, I would love to see it hold up roughly above, let's say 53.75, just to give it a little bit of leeway. There's your bull flag consolidation. Breakouts get us there. If it breaks that, it's all about the support trend line on the daily. Could be anywhere from roughly, I don't know, depending on time of week here, 52 to 52.50, all right? So that's your deeper pullback area. If it does not hold there, obviously not interested in any type of longs inside of Verizon. If you get to 55.67, then I'd probably take off a portion of the position and see if we can monitor for continuation likely into 56.75 as the next one, all right? So that's Verizon in a nutshell. And again, slow mover. Maybe you take small size and just swing it, let it do its thing. We'll see. Roku is up next. This one's definitely gonna be more of a day trade. I wanted to show you this uh, scrunched out first, just establishing the context. Really strong daily downtrend, right? And if we zoom in, we are starting to fill this gap from the earnings gap down. So do we roll over off of the gap fill is the question. So inverted hammers that print around here, anything that really fails at the resistance trend line, I would just look for rollover off of a failed move to accept back up into this range right here. And then we're looking for the equal lows roughly around 112.75, uh, we'll call it just for round number's sake. So basically failure of Roku around this area, 142.80s, 143, 143.50s. If we cannot get acceptance above that, break the resistance trend line on the daily, just look for trend continuation and lower here inside of Roku. Obviously, a falling broad market would help you out in this scenario. Next up, we have Coinbase. This one is actually going to be a long if the market wants to make the move higher. Notice how we have a pressure cooker top, about four days worth of price action, equal highs there around 182.81. If it breaks, we're looking for a scalp into this area here. Prior resistance, then turn to support, support as well. That's 195.50s after that monitor for continuation into the higher highs here around 214.40. So that's the upside play here inside of Coinbase. If this is truly going to be you know, some sort of double bottom, the more conservative traders taking the neckline break to the upside here. Right, So maybe, again, if we can break the four-day pressure cooker top, it's the start of the move back to the neckline. We'll see. That number, once again, is 182.80s. If it rolls over or never breaks in the first place, I would be pretty careful and not try to bottom fish again off of the 164, we'll call it, for round number's sake. Noting, we already had the buy side reaction once. If we come back to it off of a lower high, 
you know the deal, doesn't look good, starting to form as a bit of a flush point, right? Next up, we have MMM for a gap fill to the upside, similar to Roku, whereas the daily downtrend is in effect here, but the gap hasn't quite filled all the way yet. So if we can get any sort of higher low pullbacks and then a reattempt to 151.65 ish area, look for scalps, right? This is a day trade here. This is not a swing trade, uh, but up into 154.20 to fill the gap and then reassess, right? It could go higher or we could get just like in Roku, the potential for a gap fill reversal, something that would start to look like that. So all I'm sort of pointing out here is the fact that we have nice, respectful, equal highs around that one. 5164. You could either trade for the gap to fill or for the gap fill reversal and then to continue to the downside. Uh, this daily downtrend, right? And the broad market direction will certainly help you out. If it's moving and ripping to the upside, you're going to trade for the gap fill and then monitor for continuation. If it's sort of weak and lackluster, maybe you look for the gap to fill and then short doing something like this with a stop just above. So use the broad market as a bit of an indication as to what may unfold in some of these smaller companies or individual companies, I should say, into the upcoming week. Next and lastly is really just a reminder on the trade desk, simply because it is coming back into play. We did technically violate the right hand and shoulder of the inverted head and shoulders right here, but because of what unfolded on the Thursday, Friday session, it's back in play. It's still respecting that breakout area, the neckline of the pattern. So up and over 84.35, you're still looking for that rotation higher into the next double top daily structure back in there around 98.21. So I do still like this as a long candidate as long as this time because it's already had its opportunity, right? You, you really only give things a number of chances. Here was its chance to move lower. Uh, it didn't happen. So now we want to see it stay in the range. If it falls back out once again, not a good sign. Okay. So as long as it remains in this area here, roughly 84.35 down to 76, we get consolidation, still looking for the breaks up above 84.35. All right. So that's the last trade idea that I had for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to vote on Alibaba. If you think it should be replaced, what should it be replaced with? We'll take a tally and see if it's an attractive option and move forward from there. I wish you all a green trading week.